This is a true story. There used to be this shitty old TV show called Quantum Leap. And every episode started with the main character, a sort of scientist, time traveler, beam into someone else's body. As in each show began, he didn't know who he was or where he was in space and had to figure all these things out on the fly. And that described my first night of graduate school. I was alcoholic, quantum leaping. Which meant I got too drunk before school and I blacked out. Which meant I came to sitting in a classroom having no idea how I got there or what I'd been saying or doing. Ten people talking books, the professor pontificating, and blacked out me. It wasn't the first impression I was hoping to make. My day had started off in an exciting manner. I could not wait for graduate school. Writing was my favorite vice. I did it every day, no matter how drunk or hungover I was. Shit, I love scribbling with the hangover, because for whatever reason, I was more honest. Unable to front attitude, no bravado, no swagger, just a soggy man-child being candid. Hanging out with other nerds who dug words the way that I did sounded like paradise. Anyway, a new friend, Scott, had invited me to a baseball game that afternoon before school, and I figured, no sweat, catch a Giants game, then head up to USF. Simple, right? But as we walked to our seats, we passed too many beer stands for me not to get thirsty and offer to buy rounds. Seeing as how it was only 1 p.m. and school didn't start for five hours, so it was no big deal. Just one harmless cup of suds, and Scott was too much of a gentleman not to reciprocate a round of beers by the second inning. And I was raised right, new to meet his kindness with a skyscraping consideration of my own, buying not just beers this time, but also whiskey shots. And Scott didn't come of age in a fucking wool's den. And he, knew, <laughs> he knew about etiquette and brought the same combo back and we ping-ponged rounds until we decided to ditch the dumb baseball game and hunker down in the dive bar and I lost contact with the world. One time in my early 20s I went scuba diving in Cozumel and down there they drift dive. People sinking to 100 feet in the ocean and getting swept up in the current, moving through the water without swimming at all. Floating. Weightless. The boat followed your trail of bubbles picking you up, say, 40 minutes later in an entirely different spot from where you went under. That's what blacking out is like. Submerged. Zero gravity, a specter in the world's currents, slithering and gliding like seaweed. Until the minute you're pulled back in the boat, back to your life. In the case of my first night of grad school, that happens when someone said, what do you think, Josh? And unfortunately, that somebody happened to be the professor, and I didn't say anything back at first. Must have blinked like 60 times, like coming up from a coma, looking around at the other people sitting at this table, looking at them, looking at me, knowing I must have stunk like stale spirits and spongy saliva, so disoriented, knowing that I probably shot my mouth off and made a fool out of myself already and aborted this whole opportunity before it even got a chance to succeed and I should get up and run out of there because I did not belong. I was wrong. I wasn't like these people and they weren't like me. There was no unity. I was alone and I was sick and I couldn't do one right thing. Couldn't stay sober for one fucking afternoon. Couldn't take care of the things that mattered to me. I tried to stay calm, plastering a poker face on and saying to the professor, can you come back to me? I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> Who else wants to go, he said. You know, somebody volunteered. I surveyed my surroundings. None of my classmates were eyeballing me. I knew those gazes, those sideways double takes, the periphery sneak a peek when I had made a fool of myself, throwing a garbage can through a window, pulling my cock out, throwing up, any of a hundred dim things that seemed to happen, making everybody in my vicinity uncomfortable and making me bask in their anxiety. I stayed quiet for the remaining hour of class, loaded still at the end. The teacher didn't say he and I needed to talk privately. He didn't even look my way when I was leaving. Either I'd gotten away with it or it would have been such a nightmare that he planned on telling his superiors that I'd be tossed out of the program. I didn't know and I didn't care. Or I did care, but there was nothing I could do about it. I searched my pockets and found a gram or so of cocaine, slipped in the school's bathroom to blow a rip, cut in a huge drift on the back of the toilet. And that was when I wondered how I got to school. I probably drove. 
I was a serial drunk driver back then. I called Scott hoping he might tell me that I did the responsible thing and hailed a cab. Unfortunately not. Scott said I sped away from the bar, flaring the clash. There was nothing to do except wander the streets around campus until I found my car. That was the thing about quantum leaping. All the particulars were lost to you. You had a body, you had atoms, you had molecules, you had shame. But anything requiring context could not be grasped. I didn't have a jacket and strolled the roads up and down for what felt like a hundred years, but must have been less than half an hour because another student who I met at the orientation a couple weeks back named Randy stopped his car and asked if I needed a ride. I got in and he smiled at me saying, where to? And I told him I couldn't remember where I'd parked, and he took a closer look, a closer smell, then asked me, are you okay? I did the only respectable thing. I lied. <laughs> I'm diabetic. <laughs> My sugar's not so good and I can't remember where I parked. Let's get you something to eat. No, I need to go home. But where's your car? I should have stopped there. But the cocaine was like a coach, coaxing me to make that lie the most convincing, surely Oscar-nominated clod that could fall out of my mouth. And it clanged out of me a whole spiel about how I'd had diabetes since elementary school, and I was normally good at keeping my sugar balanced, and I'd gone to the Giants game, and the only options were junk food, and blah, 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 blah. Who cared what else oozed from my lips? Point was, I blacked out and came to in the middle of my class, and my car was MIA, and poor Randy had to listen to me blather until we finally found it. I smiled and pointed at my car like we discovered America. <laughs> Thanks, I said, opening the door. Should you be driving? It was right there, in his eyes. He wasn't going to call me on it, but he knew the whole diabetes diatribe was bullshit. I'll be fine, I said. Still drunk, still coked up, still the best drunk driver in town. I made it home unscathed. My ex-wife Blue was stomped on the couch, watching reruns of a terrible sitcom. I tried sneaking by her to the shower, but she muted the TV and said, How was your first night? I barely said three words before she interrupted me. Are you liquor? Everything came uncorked right then, blurting the whole day out to her and crashing in her lap kicking and wailing. I said, why can't I, why can't you what? Why can't I do better? She didn't answer me, spent her energy consoling me, letting me ride around, letting me gnash my teeth, letting me gnarl my sorrow, letting me purge until I pulled it together enough to say, well, I think I got away with it. If sympathy and empathy could evaporate, blues was gone, just like that. What? Yeah, the teacher didn't say anything to me after, so I think I got away with it. You've been looking forward to this forever. Yeah, I know. So you didn't get away with anything. Yeah, but you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean, Josh. Nobody does. She threw me out of her lap, unmuting the TV and staring at her sitcom. She watched her show and I lived mine, making my way to the shower holding my head under the water, hoping that this episode of Quantum Leap was almost over, and as the next one kicked off, I'd come to in a life unlike anything I'd ever known. Thank you for your time. <laughs>